What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be building the bed system in the back of the Tacoma. So I've wanted to do this for some time uh, so that I can start planning more uh, trips to go in the Tacoma, being able to sleep in the back and go camping and whatnot. So in order to do that, I wanted to keep room in the back for uh, luggage and whatnot, and then also have an area to sleep in. Since the camper shell isn't rated for a lot of weight, this was the best option that I had. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys um, all the materials needed and kind of the process of how to build uh, this bed system. So to start this process, I went to Home Depot and I kind of had a list of things that I was gonna buy from there. So to start, I got uh, two four by eight uh, sheets of plywood. I got three quarter inch so that it's able to hold a lot more weight. You could go up or down from that size, but three quarters is kind of what I recommend. Um, other than that, I also got some indoor outdoor carpeting. It's kind of like an all weather carpet that you can uh, use onto surfaces so that it's a lot smoother. So I plan on stapling that to the four by eight and then that'll create a nice softer surface so you don't get any splinters whenever you put your your sleeping bag or your sleeping pad on top of that. Also I got some longer two by eights that I plan on cutting so that they can fit as the sort of the rack that those four by eight sheets of plywood are going to fit onto. Kind of the it's pretty basic. Luckily uh, Toyota designs the bed so that you can do this. So the two by eights will fit in here. There'll be two of them. There's another slot out there in the back to where you can put it. So you'll have two two by eights. You'll take your sheet of plywood, which I plan on cutting down to size. You'll then place your sheets of plywood on here with the all weather carpeting on top. And that kind of creates your bed platform. That's going to allow you to have roughly uh, five to six inches of clearance underneath here to put whatever stuff you want all the way towards the back. You could possibly develop some sort of tray system or like uh, drawers so that you can have stuff more accessible. Um, but for now, just doing the platform is gonna be enough for me. Some of the downsides that I expect from this platform is gonna be the fact that there's gonna be a little bit less headroom than there would be if I just slept on the ground. Um, however, I mean, we're camping in the back of a truck, so it's not going to be that luxurious. Um, I think it's just going to be a lot easier than having to pop up a tent on top or having to put something out on the ground to sleep on. I think this is just going to be way more versatile and I'll be able to kind of go anywhere and sleep anywhere. It's also going to add some uh, a sense of security because being able to sleep in the back of the camper shell, you can lock the truck, you're in the truck, and uh, you feel a little bit safer rather than being in a tent. Um, so I kind of like this more for if you're doing like parking lot camping if you have to for whatever reason. So let's get started with the process. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually measure those slots on the sides of the bed and make these uh, two by eights into the right length so that they can fit in the back of the truck. So after cutting the two two by eights, um, I actually had to reduce the width of this one in order for it to fit in the tray there. But we got them both cut and fit in here. Now we're going to take measurements off the plywood so that I can have two sheets that are different sizes. Um, what I think I might do is have one third of the bed be one sheet and then the other two thirds be another sheet. So that if I want to, I can just put one side up like the two thirds side if I'm sleeping by myself. And then I can have all of my luggage over here on the other side. So the pieces of plywood are all in. It's not absolutely perfect. There's a little bit more of a lip here, and this piece of wood is a little bit bowed, but I think it looks great. I think it's gonna do just fine. Now I'm just gonna get it all wrapped up in the all-weather carpeting and uh, see how it looks from there. So after getting all these pieces nice and properly sized for the back of the Tacoma, now I'm gonna be doing uh, or stapling the carpet to the plywood. So I'm just using a regular old like stapler using 3 8 uh, size staples. And I'm kind of just folding it over one side. I'm gonna staple it. I decided not to wrap the sides of the plywood because um, I don't think it's really gonna matter too much with the movement of the, the plywood. Uh, the forward and the back is really where most of the movement's gonna be happening inside the truck. 
and in order to put the carpet overlaying on this side and this side, it'll prevent it from rubbing on the bed of the truck. So I'm gonna kind of finish up uh, stapling this carpet to both these pieces of plywood, and then I'll show you the finished result, and I also need to do the cross boards that go across the bed of the truck because I don't want any wood rubbing on wood. Uh, I want there to be a little bit less friction in those places. So I think I may have enough carpet here. I did buy uh, two rolls at Home Depot, but I did find this stuff, which was in our race trailer about 10 years ago. Uh, so I decided to just use what I have because I can return what I don't need. And uh, any old carpet will work. This stuff just has a little bit more padding. That's why I decided to go with this stuff rather than the, the rolls that I bought at Home Depot. So I'm also gonna actually cut the corners here so that it folds over nicely. I'm gonna create kind of like a, a little diagonal cut along here and then do the same thing on the other side so that when I fold these over, the edges meet nicely. What are you doing? Uh, stapling the carpet. Um, so like this is probably the, as you can see this thing keeps popping out. This is probably the cheaper way to get a stapler. Um, it doesn't require an air gun, which is nice, or like power, but this thing's old and the, this like thing just keeps popping out, doesn't stand very easily. But it was here in the garage, so I just went and bought new staples for it. The staples were pretty cheap, they were like five bucks. As you can see, just keeps shooting out. Uh, the staples for like 1,200 staples was $4 and some change. So pretty pretty affordable option. If this is all you have, I would I would suggest it. It works it's working pretty good. Um, this is the last plywood piece that I'm gonna be doing and then I'm gonna do those crossbars. Uh, so far I'm really really happy with how this is looking. This is a nice carpeted material. Okay so I just finished the whole project of building all the materials and getting them all ready to go. Now I'm gonna show you some different configurations on the way that you can kind of set up this bed system. So to start, we have the crossbars that can go as your like support. So these just lay flat back here into the trays. Because this, um, carpeting is a little bit thicker than the other one I bought. You kind of just have to put a little weight on it to get it settled into the ridge. But this way it's a nice snug fit and it doesn't really move around, which is nice. So once that's in there, you can take your panels, which like I said earlier, this is like two thirds of the bed. That's like a third of the bed over there. So you can put the bigger one in, whichever side you want. I purposely wrapped this side and not this side. Because I didn't have, one, I didn't have enough material. Uh, two, this is gonna be the side that goes against the bed of the truck. Just kind of helps me remember. You just kind of slide it in. Just fits perfectly in place. Um, there is room for it to slide back and forth just a little bit, but having this overlap here allows it to kind of be padded. So if you're braking and accelerating throughout, you know, your trip or whatever, it's not gonna damage the wood or the bed too much. Um, now this is one way that you can just leave it. There's enough room here for one person to sleep and you can have access to your bags right here. You can put your cooler, lantern, whatever stuff you might want right next to you. Um, and then you also can have some under storage underneath you. Uh, that's one way to do it. Um, the other way is just to go full bed. You can throw the third piece in, slide it all the way to the back, which kind of sits nice and snug. This piece of wood was warped, uh, so it kind of has a little bow in it, but once you lay on it, it flattens out, no problem. Um, but that allows you to still have your storage underneath. Now you can fit two possibly even three people back there. Um, but it gives you plenty of room, you have plenty of headroom. Um, it allows you to put like an inch pad, a sleeping mat, whatever you wanna do, and then still have enough room to crawl in and out, which is nice. Um, another thing that I found was if you are 
say it's raining or whatever, crazy weather, you don't want to be outside, you drop this one down below, slide it all the way to the back. And now you have a place where you can sit, you can use this as a backrest over on that side. You can sit either way and it kind of allows you to like chill, read whatever you want. Um, since you can't really sit up fully right here, you have this down here and now you can do that there, which is really nice. Uh, I built this purposely for work because when I go work, I'm gone for a few days and I like to sleep in the back of the truck. Um, now that I have this, I will do that. Before I was actually sleeping in the Subaru, which really sucked because there was no leg room. So for this, um, now I have a plenty of room. I can have my food and, and my cooler over here, my clothes and whatnot. And I'm, I'm 5'9", and I have like plenty of room. I can lay fully flat. I can lay diagonal if I really wanted to by putting this other piece up. But I think like this is pretty much how I'm gonna set it up. And it's nice because just close it up and you can leave it like that. And you still have plenty of room to do like truck stuff, put whatever utility things you need back there. Um, but overall, I'm pretty stoked with this. It only took me about three and a half hours going to the Home Depot twice and kind of getting all the wood and the materials and putting it all together. Uh, so totally worth it. So I think that's gonna basically be it for today's video. A um, Little bit of the price breakdown for all the materials. Since I didn't use the carpet, there's gonna be kind of two prices that I actually spent on this project. So for the wood, the staples, and the carpet, it was 204 at Home Depot. Um, now these were $20 per roll, or they were 24 or something per roll. So that's gonna be a good amount of money that I'd be getting back. That's like 20, 20, 25% less that I actually spent on the project. So, um, I think I, it's probably safe to say that I spent 100, 150, 160 dollars to build this whole thing. Um, but other than that, I mean, that's a really good price for building a bed system and, and kind of still have storage and whatnot. Um, if you look online on Google and whatnot, you can see those really fancy systems with drawers and everything, and those can be like up to $1,200. So being able to set this up for roughly $200, uh, I think is an absolute steal, and I think everyone should be doing this to start out. I think this is gonna be a great entry level kind of thing for overlanding and camping out of. Uh, so I'm stoked to see how this how this lasts me until I'm ready to upgrade to something better. Um, but overall, I'm very happy with the project. Um, but again, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.